All right, let's pick up with section 5A, types of statistical studies, the fundamentals of statistics. We were looking at sampling methods, and I didn't get a chance to go through these four, but if you choose your sample by knocking on the door of every 10th room, that's systematic. You've got a system, every 10th one. Uh, to survey opinions on a proposed new water line, a research firm randomly draws the addresses of 150 homeowners from a public list of homeowners. Random, they're randomly selecting, like bingo. Number three, randomly selecting students who were in the library one day. That would be convenience. Um, and number four, agriculture inspectors for Jefferson County check the levels of residue from three common pesticides on 25 ears of corn from each of 104 corn producing farms in the county. Think of this as subgroups. We're gonna break, uh, break this up into farms. So we have 104 farms, so those are our subgroups. And within each one of those farms or groups, we're gonna randomly select 25 ears. So we've got subgroups, that would be stratified sampling. Okay, let's look at some types of statistical studies. Okay, we have the first type is an observational study where you observe or measure characteristics of the sample members, but you don't try to influence or modify those characteristics. Basically, it's a survey of some sort. So most common uh, uh, statistical studies are basic surveys. And actually, this is the one for your final project. This is the type of statistical study you will do. You will be doing a survey. So if I ask you what type of statistical study, that's, that's a question. If that is a question on your final project, the type of study is an observational study. So let's just look at some examples. Uh, consider someone on the busy street of a New York neighborhood asking random people that pass by how many pets they have. Then taking this data and using it to decide if there should be more pet food stores in the area or maybe even a pet park. It's an observational study the researcher is just observing the answers of the survey without influencing the outcome in any way. So it's just a simple survey that is an observational study. Or going back to the UALR one. Percentage of UALR students that have a computer with internet access at home. That's a simple survey and it would be an observational, an observational study. Sample surveys, we're not trying to influence the members of our sample, we're just asking a question, just observing their, their response. Okay, so observational study. The other one is an experiment. And this is where we have a treatment group and a control group. So in an experiment, researchers actually apply a treatment to some or all of the sample members and then observe the effects of the treatment. Um, these are done specifically with medication and uh, medical type uh, studies. So in experiments, in an experiment you have to have a treatment group. That's the group who received the treatment and a control group those particular members do not receive the treatment. And then what you want to do is look back and see if the treatment helped in the treatment group, um, if the people in the control group weren't helped or whatever the case may be that you're trying to prove. So in an experiment, we have a treatment group, a control group. Now, when you're in an experiment, um, both groups have to be alike in every way. There has to be no bias. Both samples have to be similar. And you've probably heard of the placebo effect. 
And the placebo effect, or I should say, let's first go with the placebo, then we'll talk about the placebo effect. When you have uh, members in both the treatment group and the control group, the treatment group might get the real medicine, let's say. The people in the control group get a fake pill. So both groups are taking a pill, but neither group knows which one is getting what. Only the researchers know who's getting the actual medication. So the placebo is just this fake pill. It lacks the active ingredient that the uh, treatment group would be getting. Okay, so treatment group gets the real medication, the control group gets a fake pill, and that fake pill is called the placebo. Now the placebo effect occurs when people who are taking the placebo or the fake pill actually start to feel better psychologically because they're in the experiment, they're taking the pill, so psychologically they begin to feel better if it's a pill to make you feel better. Or they the, the pill has effects on them, um, but it's just because they believe they're receiving the real pill. So definition-wise, the placebo effect refers to the situation in which patients improve simply because they believe they are receiving a useful treatment. What's interesting is the placebo effect will affect both the treatment group and the control group at the same rate. So it kind of cancels each other out when you are doing a study. Now, notice earlier I said, the treatment group and the control group, they each get a pill, but neither one knows who's getting which pill. Well, that gets into blinding. You want to keep your subjects in the dark about who is the treatment group and who is the control group. So that's called blinding. Neither group knows who's getting which treatment. In blinding, you can have an experiment that's single blind where only the participants don't know if they uh, are in the treatment group or the control group. Actually, the best type of experiment to, pull, to take away any kind of bias is a double blind. That's the better one to use. And that's the situation where the participants, as well as the researchers, are experimenters. Um, Neither of those know who belongs to the treatment or the con control group. There is like a third party somewhere who is administering the medicine and taking care of that. This is your best type of study to do when you're doing an experiment, a double blind. Participants don't know, researchers don't know. Single blind, only the participants don't know. So let's look at these questions and figure out what type of statistical study would be the best in these three situations, either observational, observational, or experiment. So think about those for a minute. So the question is, would, we, would this be an observational study that would give us the best results or an experiment? So question is, what is the average income of stockbrokers? Okay, well, that's just going to be an observational study because we just want to basically do a survey to find the average income. And all I have to do is do a quick survey. I'm not trying to do an experiment with a treatment and control group, just a basic survey, and that's observational. We get into an experiment when we're trying to test a theory or test a new medication. Like part B, can lifting weights improve runner's times in a 10 kilometer race? Well, I would wanna do an experiment. 
Blinding would not be necessary. And let's just think about that. My treatment group would, they would now have to include lifting weights as part of their training regimen. The control group would refrain from using weights as part of their um, training. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be blind because it's okay if each group knows what's going on. Um, so there's not really reason. There we go again. It appears that I get about one interruption per video with that error. Got to figure out what's going on with that. Um, but can lifting weights improve runner's times? Does not, we don't need blinding, but we do have a control group and a treatment group. And finally, the last one, can a new herbal remedy reduce the severity of colds? Well, we're testing a medication, a remedy, so we definitely have an experiment. And since it's a medication, we want it to be double blind to get the best results. So the treatment group would get the cold remedy and the control group would get the placebo. Okay, last item here is called a margin of error. So a margin of error is used to describe a confidence interval that's likely to contain the population parameter. It's an interval that's likely to contain what the exact answer is to your question for the population. Mm, maybe that'll get a little bit later, uh, get a little bit clearer later on. But it's an interval from some number to another number. And what we do is we're going to be given a sample statistic like that 79% I had earlier. But I'm going to take that sample statistic and subtract a value that they give me called the margin of error. Then I'll take that sample statistic and add to it a value that they gave me, the margin of error. And what that do is what that's going to do is it's going to give me a range of values, or it's also called a confidence interval. And that interval is called a 95% confidence interval, which means we are 95% confident that the true value for the population is between those values. Have you ever been driving and you see a sign that says land for sale? And behind the number, like in this case, it says land for sale 14 plus or minus acres. Well, that little plus or minus is like a margin of error. So suppose the sign said 14 plus or minus, let's say, 2.5 acres. So let's construct a confidence interval. This 2.5 acres is called my margin of error. So the amount of acreage I could, when I buy this, the amount of acreage that I would get would be 14 plus 2.5 and 14 minus 2.5. That's going to give me an interval. So let's create that. So if I take the originally stated value of 14 and add the margin of error, which is 2.5 to that, I would get an upper value of 16.5. If I took the original 14 acres and subtracted the margin of error from that, I would get the low value of 11.5. So the confidence interval would be 11.5 dash 16.5. That's the interval um, that I would call my confidence interval. That means I am 95% confident I am buying land that has acreage between those two values. Finally, I would like you to do this last confidence interval problem. You can read the information I have here. I've got a note at the bottom how to interpret that. But I'm out of time for this video, so let me know if you have questions.